My name is Dr. Tel Oren, and I study nature in order to find out what are the best foods that humans should be eating. From time immemorial, humans have resided close to the seashores, the coastline where access was easy to other parts of the continents in which they resided. Therefore, it was easy for them to continuously partake of the harvest that came from the salty waters of the seas. These plants that came out of the seas and ended up on the beach were a major part, a major staple in their diet. It contained lots of salt, it contained sulfur and many other nutrients they didn't have to know at the time but they simply ate them and their body adapted to these foods and their health has become reliant upon these foods. Some of those macroalgaes, as we call them, these plants, are coming from various families of plants indicating there's a great variety of nutrients. Some of them are called the red algae, some are called the brown algae, and some are called green algae. All of those are visible plants unlike the microalgae that some people refer to as in blue-green algae or uh, chlorella and, uh, or spirulina which are microscopic. The main food of humans for many thousands of years has therefore been macroalgae, big, large, visible plants. And because they derive from so many types of families of plants, from different ancestors, they have created a great variety of species that provided us with numerous nutrients that are not easy to find in land plants such as this one which are perfectly green and grow on earth instead of in salty waters. Today we don't eat enough foods that come from salty waters. We eat all the time food that come from land-based agriculture and we eat too many of the seeds from the agricultural uh, lifestyle of today, too many of the grains and legumes, the nuts and the seeds, because they are satisfying, but not enough of the greens themselves and the flowers. When we lived close to the sea, when we developed our physiological traits around seawater, we continuously got those special nutrients. Some of them are known as sulfated polysaccharides, which are unique to these sea algae. And they contain various chloroplasts, or little organs within which the uh, photosynthesis takes place, organs which contain various pigments that have been shown to have high promise medicinally. Some of those pigments have been studied and shown to mobilize the immune system increase the cellular immune response, which is important in today's environment and today's society, which has become imbalanced, immunologically speaking. Some of the nutrients support hormonal balance. Some are inducing satiety and satisfy us without relying on too many nuts and seeds and grains because of the polysaccharide level, which increases satiety and makes us feel more satisfied and help us lose weight. Indeed, many of those nutrients have been shown to assist in supporting healthy body composition, reduction of risk for obesity and diabetes, improved immune system, and improved overall health. In addition, the sulfur content helps us create a better environment for detoxification because our body requires a lot of sulfur for detoxifying heavy metals and other common toxins in today's environment. And um, the other nutrients support other physiological functions from the digestive system all the way to the integumentary system and the nervous system. Some studies are suggesting that even cancerous development could be stopped or slowed down. Hyperplasia of cells could be reduced, meaning cells will not transform into pre-cancer state. 
and also some studies show that there is a high likelihood of uh, natural self-killing or self-death of cells known as apoptosis which is how cancer cells tend to basically self-destruct. So we have a lot of promise in the medicinal arena and indeed many of those algae uh, plants from the sea have been used traditionally by various societies for medicine. But we don't need to look at it from the perspective of medicine for health issues and medicine, medical diseases. We have to look at those plants as simple foods that we no longer get in sufficient quantity to satisfy our need for a myriad of nutrients that we no longer receive from regular land-based agriculture. We need to eat those sea weeds or sea vegetables on a regular basis and have a good variety of them, not just one type or two types, but as many as we can, and we need to get them almost daily to be closer to what things used to be when we were in nature. So if we could get them in good variety in the supermarket, that would be great. If we can't get sufficient variety of them, we may need to get them in other forms. Maybe in a liquid form will make it a little easier if uh, we get a good quantity that makes it easier for us to tolerate their flavor uh, when it is already outside of its natural habitat. If we wash them, we lose some of the salt that comes with them. They're not going to be as delicious as they used to be in nature. When you go to the sea and pick some kelp from the sand and taste it, it tastes delicious and crunchy and satisfying, but today we are afraid to do it because of the pollutants that are associated with our coastline. So we may need to wash them thoroughly and get them from an unpolluted environment and they might lose some of their flavor, in which case we may need to concentrate them in a liquid form and simply enjoy them that way by adding them to soup or to uh, water or some other drink that is more easy, more easy to tolerate so that people could get those nutrients in that once were taken for granted but today no longer can be taken for granted. Therefore, in general, I would say that my experience with nutrition, and I am a board certified nutritionist, my experience has shown that the greater variety in our diet of healthy plant-based foods, the healthier we can get on every level. Many physiological aspects of, uh, of this will not be known for a while until we do more research. But we don't need to second guess nature. We need to simply do what nature has told us to do, which is to get a huge variety of phytonutrients from as many plants as we can possibly get and to make sure that a big percentage or big proportion of those plants will come from the sea. Therefore, we need to continuously seek and reach for sea vegetables and add them into our diet in the greatest variety possible to assure ourselves of a life that is more vital, less likely to become diseased, so more preventive medicine by simply eating healthy and complementing our diet with as many nutrients as we can possibly obtain from the sea and from the land. That is my health tip for today.